Here, Manitoba, a fishing camp called Mile 94, eight kilometers from Puckettawagan. On September 17, 1999, 44-year-old Elizabeth Dorian arrived at Mile 94, a commercial fishing camp where she stayed almost four days with friends. The last time she was known to be seen was September 20th. She was wearing a button sweater, t-shirt, and jogging pants. Elizabeth was reported missing on November 13, 1999. At five foot four inches tall, Elizabeth was approximately 150 pounds at the time of her disappearance. Two ground searches were conducted by the RCMP, but Elizabeth was never found. Elizabeth's home community of Apasquia Cree Nation is across the bridge from the Paw. Puckettawagan is a 400 kilometer journey from the Paw by train. Little is known for sure about Elizabeth's disappearance but it is suspected by some that foul play could have been a factor. At any time during this broadcast or afterward, if you have any information that might help solve the case of the disappearance of Elizabeth Dorian, visit our website. Someone out there has answers. Our goal is to find them. Did Elizabeth leave mile 94 and become lost and succumb to the elements? Could she have been a victim of homicide? Is there a chance she may still be alive? What happened to Elizabeth Dorian? Elizabeth loved the outdoors and grew up surrounded by the beauty of nature in a Pasquia Cree nation. She was an experienced hunter, trapper, and fisher, and loved to do beadwork. As Karen Deborah Young grew up, Elizabeth was often around. Elizabeth and Karen's mom were good friends. When Karen thinks of Elizabeth, this is what comes to mind. Laughter. Um, she liked to laugh. She liked to joke around. And what they used to do was women would gather and they would bead or make rugs um, for money, that, to, to make money for themselves. And they were like self-sufficient kind of thing in those days. Corporal Jana Amaro is with the D Division Historical Case Unit in Winnipeg. She speaks to the details of Elizabeth's case. On November 13th, 1999, Elizabeth Dorian was reported missing to the RCMP. Her friend came in to advise that she had last seen Elizabeth on September 20th of 1999 at Mile 94. Now, Mile 94 is a fishing camp for commercial fishermen, which is located about five miles south of Puckettawagan in northern Manitoba. So Elizabeth had gone to the camp uh, around September 17th, 1999, and she was there for about four days with friends. On September 20th, she went missing. After that, once she was reported, the RCMP initiated a ground search and rescue team and brought the police dogs out in the attempts to try and locate her. They went up and down some steep embankments um, and searched the camp where she would have been, but unfortunately they weren't able to locate Elizabeth. John Cochran is Elizabeth's great nephew, but to him, she was his granny. Elizabeth lived with John's family when he was a little boy. I used to watch her sometimes in, um, like, in my mom's kitchen there when she was living with us. She used to do um, like lighter cases and stuff and used to make these necklace things. She used to just sit there for hours and just do them and, and she would like sell them to people who ever wanted them and stuff. And, she like, you know, she took a lot of time to do them. She was like, um, like a love, love and caring person, and she always like looked out for others before herself. But like, she had addiction to alcohol, and that's what got the best of her. And when she was not alcohol, she was like, she was a nice person. And, Elizabeth's disappearance has been devastating for those who love her, including her daughter, Elizabeth Georgina Sims, who was prevented from a long overdue reunion. Estranged from her mom from a young age, Georgina hasn't had contact with Elizabeth since childhood. One day, she received something special in the mail. It was two weeks before she went missing. I received a registered mail to my door. And when I opened it, it was a late birthday card from my mother stating that I had siblings and that she, there was never a day that she never thought of me. 
She always wondered where I was and then she thanked me for the pictures of the, my her grandchildren that I had had at the time. Any hope that Georgina had for reuniting with her mom was lost when she found out she was missing. It was later on in the year of 2000, one of my aunties from Brandon, she came up to me and said, you could stop looking for your mom now. She's, she's gone now. And then I just turned around and I looked at her. I said, what are you talking about? And she said she went missing. And then from there, I just went downhill and I just left the province and ran. Left my family and friends behind. I just wanted to forget everything. The news of Elizabeth's disappearance rippled through her family. Her niece, Primrose Bloomfield, remembers when she first heard Elizabeth was gone. Probably a month after. This was in probably 1999. I know that she went to Pagadawagan on a train. She went with her friend and her friend came back, but she didn't. And I always wondered what happened to her. Elizabeth's family has been left wondering ever since. Is it possible someone who was with Elizabeth has the answers? Will Elizabeth's loved ones ever have closure? Can this case that is nearly 20 years old be solved? Forty-four-year-old Elizabeth Dorian took the train from her home community of a Pasquia Cree nation to Puckettawagan in September of 1999. She was last seen on September 20th after spending a few days with friends at Mile 94 Commercial Fishing Camp. Elizabeth was reported missing on November 13th, 1999 and has not been heard from since. Two ground searches were conducted by the RCMP. Many steep embankments were searched, as well as the surrounding camp. No evidence of Elizabeth has ever been found. If you have any information that might help solve the case of the disappearance of Elizabeth Dorian, visit our website. Elizabeth's home community of Apasquia Cree Nation, which is bordered by the Paw Manitoba, is six and a half hours from Winnipeg. It is a community surrounded by the beauty of nature. People like to go hunt fish and trap and stuff, and like when something happens around you, like the community gets together and help each other out, even though you're family or not. They like to go watch the blizzard games and stuff, and like participate in like the powwows and. There's community meeting here and stuff for the band, and there's just a lot of little things you can do here. And when Karen Deborah Young was a little girl, she was surrounded by members of her community, including Elizabeth. My mom did a lot of drinking because of the uh, being a single parent and trying to take care of two small children, and um, we lived right beside one of the bars in town. And so the bar would close at supper time, six to seven o'clock. And then the crowd would spill in towards my mom's house. So that's where um, I, I, I met a lot of like Elizabeth, Dorian, Lizard. I call her Liz. When we met, when she'd come around with the, with the crowd and I just remember her being the youngest of the group all the time. So I remember her, I just remember her always laughing and, and joking around, teasing. She liked to tease. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I really like that about her and her stories. She'd always tell us stories. Like, I was pretty much always around, the only child around. And um, they always used to share their stories. Um, they would stay there for that hour so that, you know, when the bar opened again, they could go back. Pretty much I ended up being the soundboard for a lot of them because a lot of them were hurt. As a child, Karen saw many people from her community suffer. I want to take you to a, point, a, a part of that life of hers was on the street. And a lot of uh, our residential school people came back broken. And at that time, racism all, also played a big part of our lives in the town of the Paw. It was, um, it was hard back in the day if, uh, if you were native and um, you were 
in the community and a lot of things happened and a lot of bad things happened to us Native women. Despite the battles that Elizabeth faced in her life, Karen remembers being taken care of by Elizabeth. She tried to take care of her as well. Pretty much if, if it wasn't for them, I probably would have not survived. The street people took care of me. And in return, I took care of them. And this was one of them. This was one of them all the time because um, I don't know how many, exactly how many times I seen her on the street where um, men would take advantage of her. And I would be, I was only like about 11, 12 years old and I would be fighting for her. Like leave her alone and, and protecting her. And she went through a lot of relationships where it was um, a lot of violence. Elizabeth had three children. Her first daughter, Elizabeth Georgina Sims, was apprehended by Child and Family Services when she was very young. She didn't know where I was or where I was taken. When I was taken away from her, I, I knew what was going on. I knew I wanted to be back with my family. And that was a struggle for me. Then when I was adopted and my culture was taken away and I had to learn English, I was seen a speech therapist and psychologist and everything. So it had a real impact on me when I was around 12. That's when my life just started changing for me. I struggled, had my first child at a young age. I graduated school when I was around 20 years old. There was a lot of alcohol in my life, and pills, I guess. I turned to one point in my life. You know, my mom's always in my heart, in my mind. It's never a day that I never think of her. I'm always mentioning her. Because she's always, it's like she's right next to me. I think she's guided me right up till this time, right now. She's been beside me. When they say that somebody's always watching over you, that's my mom. Although Elizabeth Dorian was estranged from people she loved, and she struggled with her addiction. She was deeply loved by many. Will Elizabeth's friends and family ever be able to lay her to rest? Or is there hope that she could still be out there somewhere? Elizabeth Dorian was 44 years old when she went from her home community of a Pasquia Cree Nation by train to Puckatawagan to spend time with friends at Mile 94 Fishing Camp on September 17, 1999. After spending a few days there, she disappeared without a trace. She had been expected back home by family, and she was reported missing on November 13th of that year. If you have any information that might help solve the case of the disappearance of Elizabeth Dorian, visit our website. Corporal Jana Amaro and the investigative team on Elizabeth's case continue to pursue answers and justice. We follow up on all the information that's received regarding the investigation. Normally what we do is we designate a family contact and normally what we'll do is try to filter the information through the family contact and then they can pass the information along to police at that point in time and we'll follow up on the information based on that. DNA is obtained from family members um, on missing persons investigation. Should we encounter evidence or remains, um, we're able to use their DNA to see if it matches to a possible victim. And in this case, in particular with Elizabeth, we have two family profiles on our investigation. Should something happen that we're able to locate her. When a woman struggles with addictions or poverty, she can face stigma and a lack of compassion. Karen Deborah Young grew up surrounded with people like Elizabeth who were struggling, but who were still loving, caring people. I heard so much stories and so much pain coming from them. And, and I was raised around that pain. And I had to be the strong one. I was the child looking after a bunch of adults. And sometimes Liz would help me. She would help me with her friends. Or she would come and get me. She'd say, come and help me. Can you come and help me? We gotta go help so-and-so. So I'd go, okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go help her, her, you know? Or if somebody was beaten up on the street, 
she'd come and tell me and then we'd go try to help help them or bring them to my mom's if they were able to walk we'd take them to my mom I feel that I owe a lot to them because um they took care of me they took care of me physically they took care of me like um make sure I had clean clothes to go to school make sure I had breakfast make sure I had something to eat at lunch at supper time and then in the meantime they're still all drinking around there but still made sure that I was I was taken care of and so much I really I don't know I owe a lot to them I, I like you know even though they're, they're called street people they're my family <laughs> Remembering the people who were around her as a child is important to Karen. After having lived away, Karen tried to reconnect with the people she called her family. She found them in a care home. When I first returned to the pa, I came looking for them and I couldn't find anybody and I was just sad. And for some reason, I wanted to go into the St. Paul's residence and I went in there. And I was so happy when I walked in there, everybody just turned around and they were all in there. Like, I was just like, oh, there you are, shout out. I was, like, I was just happy to see, like, I was so happy to see them. Like, I thought they all died because I was gone for like 10 years. And I was just like, oh, I was just hugging everybody. And I was just, I was so happy to see them. Like, they were so, they're well. So, but a lot of them still talk about this. And yeah, they were, she was, so we looked after all of them that are there today somehow at one point or another. In some small communities of Manitoba's north, secrets are kept tight. It has been reported that an individual who was with Elizabeth at the time of her disappearance believes she was a victim of homicide. However, for her own protection, the individual chooses not to come forward to law enforcement. Elizabeth's niece, Primrose, has heard many rumors over the years. All she wants is the truth. If somebody did something to her, maybe it comes from there to tell the truth. Like all these years, we, if she, if she died, we wanted to put a closure, like have a funeral for her, but we couldn't. People are, you know, people talk that. She's missing, maybe she's out someplace alive, but I don't think so. Elizabeth's grandson, John Cochran, implores the people who have answers to come forward. It's like to know like what exactly happened to my granny and like how how they would feel if their granny went missing like that and how they put a burden on all my family members and my aunties and my uncles and stuff, my cousins and like, like we didn't really know what happened to her. Just people assuming their stories and I just wish they could like come forward and tell us what happened to her instead of like living a lie in their lives and I just like, I don't know how some some people can live like that. Like they can just kill somebody and get away with it and not even care in the world. Elizabeth's daughter Georgina wants closure for her mom. She has requested that her case be closed and she has asked for a death certificate for Elizabeth. Another way Georgina is finding closure is sharing her mom's story. There is unsolved mysteries out there and we have to step forward to close them not keep them open. Or it's just gonna run your life right out. Take over. I'm just done fighting, I'm done hurting, I'm just wanna heal. The love Elizabeth's family has for her hasn't faded, even though she's been gone nearly 20 years. If they could say one thing to her. That I'm okay. I made it this far. Telling her story, there's secrets there that nobody will step up to, to reveal. And it's sad. Or they could just let one of their own people just slip by. It was one of your siblings, your mother, your grandmother. Why 
Why hide what you know? I just wish I could like, just hug her. Tell her I love her. And wish she and, like wish she didn't turn to alcohol. And wish she didn't go to the puck dog that day and or she would have been still been there. I still have hope. <laughs> I have hope. And that we would find you. But always I carry your memory in my heart. Because I know you cared for me just as much as I cared for you. If you have any information that might help solve the case of the disappearance of Elizabeth Dorian, visit our website.